Secretary of the Interior and proud member of the Pueblo of Laguna, joining you from the ancestral homelands of the Anacostan and Piscataway people in Washington, D.C. It's an honor to join you for this year's conference to celebrate 50 years of the National Indian Health Board. The work you all have done to advocate for and support healthy communities is exemplary and important. Though the last two and a half years brought with them the devastation of a global pandemic, the National Indian Health Board rose to the challenge, securing important health care resources and basic necessities for Native communities to fight this terrible virus. With your foresight, our communities had what they needed to get vaccinated and to thereafter stay up to date on COVID-19 vaccines. That collaborative effort is part of who we are as Indigenous people. We are taught by our parents, grandparents, aunties and uncles to protect our elders and think about future generations in everything that we do. Though this pandemic was one of the most difficult times in my lifetime, our people are resilient and have a history of survival against seemingly insurmountable odds. As the first Native American cabinet secretary who leads the department that carried out many of the damaging policies of the past that our communities endured, I see it as my responsibility to lift up our people and their stories to ensure our country can learn from that history and that we can all heal from it. As many of you know, the tragic history of relocation, forced assimilation, and attempts to wipe out Native people have had lasting impacts that manifest in the disparities our communities face, including long-standing intergenerational trauma, cycles of violence and abuse, disappearance, premature deaths, and even more undocumented psychological and physiological impacts. Federal Indian boarding school policies have touched every Indigenous person I know. Some are survivors, some are descendants, but we all carry the trauma in our hearts. And that's why I launched the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative last year to undertake a comprehensive effort to recognize the legacy of boarding school policies with the goal of addressing their intergenerational impacts and to shed light on the traumas of the past. The Department of the Interior published the first volume of an investigative report and we launched The Road to Healing, a year-long tour across the country to provide Indigenous survivors of the Federal Indian Boarding School system and their descendants an opportunity to share their experiences. This has not been easy. The retelling of this history is re-traumatizing for many people, including for me. But the federal government and America needs to hear these stories. I'm grateful to partners, including Health and Human Services and Indian Health Service, who are on this journey with us, helping to provide on-site and post-event support. As part of this work to repair the trauma of the past, the Biden-Harris administration is also investing in native language programs that will reconnect our communities with our heritage and culture. Like many indigenous people in this country, I don't speak my native language because my mom was beaten in school when she spoke it and she was afraid to teach me. It's an insidious way to take away people's culture. But at the end of the day, we know that our languages hold the keys to unlocking indigenous knowledge, connections to our ancestors, and the healing we need to move forward. That's why our work in partnership with agencies across the federal government to invest in programs focused on native language preservation is so crucial. The healing that can help our communities, it won't be done overnight, but it can be done. These are a few steps among many that we will take to strengthen and rebuild the bonds within native communities that federal policies set out to break. All of this is part of President Biden's commitment to an all-of-government approach to strengthen tribal sovereignty. We'll be looking to the next 50 years of the National Indian Health Board to advocate for the needs and the health of Indigenous communities in our country and work together to build healthier communities. Thank you again for everything you do. Please give my regards to your families and enjoy the rest of the conference.